for this demo, I'm going to show you some ways of creating watercolor, okay? Just different watercolor techniques. And for this project, what you're going to need is a watercolor set, and it doesn't matter what brand you're using, just as long as it has several different colors to choose from. The paintbrushes that come with those sets work just fine, but I prefer my paintbrush that's a little bit larger, so I'm going to be using that one, okay? Um, you're going to use your paper. If you have the packet that I gave you, there's a long strip of paper that's cut. You can go ahead and use that. If you don't and you're using your own, you can take a pair of scissors and cut a longer strip, or you can use a whole sheet, but I don't like to use a whole sheet on this practice just to show you these techniques. So um, that's why I did that. Okay, you're gonna need a pencil. You're going to need other household items that do some cool special effects for watercolor. And those are a white crayon, table salt, rubbing alcohol, a Q-tip, and I'm using a thumbtack or you can use a paper clip that's opened or anything sharp like that, okay? So those are some of the, the tools that I'm gonna use for this project. If you don't have it right now, you can just watch the video and then go grab it a little bit later. Um, and if you don't have it at all, um, you can um, just look at this and see what kind of techniques you can do, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split this paper up into different sections. And I wanna do seven different techniques, so I'm gonna put six lines on there. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And they don't have to be perfect at all. I just am doing that so I can see my sections. The first one that we're doing is called wet on wet, okay? And this technique is a way of creating a nice smooth color, okay? So, oh, you also need a cup of water. I'm sorry, a cup of water to go with watercolor. Um, so what I'm going to do wet on wet, I'm dipping my paintbrush into just water and I'm going to paint just plain water in this section, okay? Plain water. And this uh, technique is good for when you want one whole layer of, of color that um, is even, okay? Then what I'm going to do is wet my brush again and go into one color, whatever color you want to use in your watercolor. Um, and you're just gonna kind of dab it on here. And what this is gonna do is the water that's on the paper is gonna spread out that color, okay? And so when this dries, it's gonna be a nice, smooth, even shade of purple throughout the whole thing. And um, I'll show you an example. This top one is what it looks like when it is dry. Okay, nice, smooth purple, okay? So that is wet on wet. The next one is called wet on dry. Okay, wet on dry. So what I'm doing is I have a wet paintbrush. I'm dipping it into my paint and swirling it around. And then all I'm doing is making marks on my paper. This is a good technique if you want dark color or very specific um, lines on your paper. Okay, that's wet on dry, okay? The next technique is called dry brush. Okay, and dry brush is when you take the paper towel and you dry off the brush pretty well. Okay, and then once it's dry, you're gonna tap it into your watercolor that's a little damp. You don't want it really, really soupy wet, but just a little damp. And then what you're gonna do is do texture. Okay, this is what it's good for is creating a lot of different texture. And that's dry brush. Okay. Alrighty, the next one I'm gonna do is use the crayon. Okay, and all I'm doing is pressing really hard on my paper with this white crayon. And it's hard to see your design, but I'm gonna try to do this upside down because my video is upside down. Okay, sweep off any excess. 
And then this works best with the darker colors. Um, so like yellow and whatnot, it doesn't work as well, but any darker color it works well with. So I already have my white on there and all I'm doing is I'm painting over it with my watercolor. And what happens is wherever the crayon is, it's resisting the water because crayons are wax based so it resists the water and it creates a cool design in your paper okay the next one i'm going to do is called scratch okay and i'm going to try to write upside down and backwards i don't know if i'll be able to but we will see all i'm doing is scratching a design right into the paper with a paper clip or a, or a uh, I'm sorry that was a thumbtack but you could use a paper clip or something that's sharp that you can scratch into the paper and then I'm just uh, going over this with my watercolor and you can see that it um, soaks into those cracks and you can start to see the designs that you made that's really good for um, very small detailed work. All right, the next two involve the salt and the alcohol. Okay, this, we're gonna do the salt one first, but both the salt and alcohol have to be done as soon as you put the watercolor down because it needs to be wet while you're doing these techniques, okay? So I'm wetting my brush, dipping it into my color, and I'm making sure I got uh, quite a bit of color on my brush, and I'm going to put this on the paper, just like this. Okay, this only works while it's wet, so make sure you're not taking your time on that. You're just getting it wet. As soon as it, um, you're done, then you're gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt onto your wet watercolor, just like that. Okay, and what that does is wherever the salt is, it's sucking up the pigment. So wherever the little pieces of salt are, um, it will um, create like a starburst or white effect, kind of good for snow or rain or just a good texture effect. All right, and you can't really see the whole effect until it's dry. When it's dry, you sweep off the salt and you can see it. You can kind of see what it looks like in here. This one's not quite dry, but you can see it's starting to do those crystallized uh, sparkle or little star-shaped white sections for when the salt is, okay? The next one is alcohol. So I dipped my paintbrush into water again, and then I am putting down the color that I want. And this works best with dark color, but you can do whatever color you want, okay? It's kind of hard to see with the lighter ones. Then I'm taking my Q-tip and dipping it into alcohol. And all I'm doing is touching the page with that, or you can let it drip too. And what that does is it creates this kind of tie-dye effect to your artwork. Um, but the only downside to that is it starts to change the color of the paper a little bit. Um, but when it dries, it looks pretty cool, too. It kind of looks like um, like a tie-dye effect here. So I just wanted to show you these cool special effects that you can do with watercolor. And then we're going to take those to create our project and create something nice um, with your watercolor. Thank you.